Welcome to our fireside chat, everyone. I'm Alana Anderson, Chief Marketing Officer from Veracode. Today, we're going to be talking with real women in tech. And with me here, I have several women from our team at Veracode. Why don't we do some quick introductions? Mansi, let's start with you. Tell me, tell us who you are, what you do at Veracode, um, where you're from. Hi, I'm uh, Ansi Shet. Uh, I'm uh, I work as a senior uh, senior principal uh, security researcher here at Veracode from like uh, let's say more than five years. Uh, what my job here is, uh, I typically uh, keep up with uh, the latest and greatest in the technology field in terms of programming languages, new frameworks, and see how we can find anti patterns of those usages in our uh, customers' uh, code. Uh, I grew up in India. I did my undergrad there. Uh, slowly and steadily, I became a developer and then uh, very organically uh, steered my career towards uh, security because uh, that was quite fascinating to me. Uh, this is like 10, 12 years ago now. Uh, so that's where I am from, yeah. Hi, uh, my name is Christy Smith, and uh, I joined Veracode to run uh, analyst relations. So I talk about security with folks that cover the industry, analysts from Gartner and Forrester. I actually joined the cybersecurity industry about 2015, uh, but it's not where I started. I was a double major in literature and philosophy, so it was a bit... Um, bit of an interesting pivot for me out of uh, program and product management into the security space. And I've actually really appreciated the how vital it is to, uh, to the digital world. So it's, it's something that I, I actually decided I wanted to spend a lot more time on. And, and I'm really grateful to be here and to be working with folks like this on solving some of the hardest challenges in security and privacy. So my name is Lupita Caraves. I've been with Veracode for about six years now. Uh, my background or my professional background is in software development. I've been fortunate enough to have the opportunity to get more customer facing experience. So at Veracode, I've since been a solution architect and now an account executive where I help C-level um, figure out their overall desired business outcomes by bridging the gaps of their technical engineers requirements to help them secure their software. I grew up in India in a small yet very glorified city uh, with two siblings and uh, my super parents. Uh, after 10 years of corporate experience, I started to continue my study and I picked cybersecurity. Uh, I, I had information technology in undergrad, so I've been working as DevSecOps engineer. So this time cybersecurity was, uh, is the future, so it, it, it was really fascinating to me. Uh, I, I joined Queen's University in Belfast, United Kingdom um, for my master's in applied cybersecurity. From there, I participated in hacker games and um, that's how I joined Veracode. So now I'm working as intern here in Veracode and outside work, I love to talk to my two year old daughter and she has a wonderful vocabulary. <laughs> That's great. So that's a great place to start. I also I have two daughters. You have a daughter, and yes, there's, and cats. there's Christy's kid. <laughs> <laughs> Just cats. Well, I think the point that we want to I want to make there is that yes, you can be a woman in tech and a woman in cybersecurity and also raise children. So um, there we go. So now a great question is. Um, you know, so we have two women from the uh, technical uh, uh, arena and a couple of women, including myself, from the more of the go-to-market side of cybersecurity and, and marketing and sales. Now, uh, Mansi, let's start with you here. Did did you did you always envision? You know, when did you start thinking that you wanted to get into the technical space? How old were you? Ah. Uh. I mean, I must be around uh, like mid teenager or something when I decided to pick this uh, line. Uh, I mean, I come from a very uh, educated family uh, and uh, in our culture, uh, education is like uh, very, very important. So picking a professional line was always uh, not even a choice. It was, I mean, it was 
I mean, it was by default what you have to do. So uh, luckily, I mean, as a kid, I was always exposed to computers. I always try, I liked uh, playing around with it. And uh, when time came, I picked up uh, engineering and uh, partly to make sure that, uh, partly my parents made sure that it is for me to be able to pay my bills. But uh, I consider myself lucky that I was actually very, very interested in all of that. I found all the computer science subjects very, very fascinating and challenging at the same time. So so it was kind of a natural progression for me. Uh, yeah, the, uh, maybe my parents picked up the line for me, but uh, I, I'm... I'm super happy with the choices I made that time. When did you know? Like, what age were you when you knew that you were going to to uh, go down a technical path? So I remember, like, growing up, I had a really hard time, like, reading and writing. And all I could do was just math. And so my, I had one teacher, I remember, she specifically called me out and said, like, you're very naturally talented at this. And... Um, she helped me like refine some of the other skills. She said, because you're going to go far. And I remember thinking, I don't know what that even means. Like both my parents are um, uh, from Mexico. I'm first generation. And so middle school came and um, I ended up like pursuing the arts. I went to a, a magnet school where I thought I was like really good at painting, drawing, like that side of my brain with complex abstract problems like made sense to me. And my math teacher there kept saying like you're you're really good at this so i kept skipping levels like i was in sixth grade taking algebra and then um someone said to me you should pursue math and science and i was like what does that even mean and so i ended up um one of my teachers at my local school that i ended up transferring to which was more math and science oriented um mr fields was his name we he was the one who put me into all these like courses. We had to build things, we had to do things. And again, I just kept being told you need to do this. And I was like, what is an engineer? Like all I knew there was lawyers, there was doctors, there was nurses. Like I didn't even know it was a field you could go into. Um, and luckily for, for the people that I had surrounded myself with, um, the Boys and Girls Club was a huge catalyst in the direction that I took. So got the opportunity to go to a private school on a full ride scholarship and in there it was stem oriented so again kept skipping math class i kept skipping math classes and um finally when it was time to go to college there was the opportunity for me to go to school full ride for a stem um oriented degree and so i took it didn't know what the heck engineering or electrical engineering was so great uh, Tunisia, how about you? Did you start? When? How old were you when you knew that you wanted to follow a technical path? Um, well, if I talk about being in technology, it was not until I was in high school because I always wanted to be a doctor. And uh, I even prepared for two years after my high school. But, but unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, I did not get a decent medical school. And that's when I decided maybe... Engineering is another path because I had mathematics. So then I chose, and then in, in, even in my first year of my graduation, I was not very sure, very devastated with the thing, with, the, with my life where I ended. But uh, now I feel that I was meant to be an engineer. So I'm by chance, but happy engineer now. Well, I think I was meant to find computers, uh, computer science as well, because I, I studied history in college, but honestly, I, I took an awful lot of computer science courses to, uh, to get my grades up, to be honest. Um, I love coding, and I was actually a COBOL TA um, at the business school when I was in college. So, so that's how I got into technology. But uh, Christy, you studied literature, so how did, what was your path? Back when I was growing up, so I grew up in Hawaii, and I actually thought that I was going to become a high school English teacher and drive a Volkswagen bug with a surfboard rack and go out dawn patrolling every morning. Like, that's that's literally how I thought I was going to live my life. Um, I, I think it was just kind of a, a, a series of uh, coincidences that, that led me into it. So, you know, I, I um, did do education and development right out of college. And uh, that led me into um, writing help files for applications. It led me into program management for systems integration. 
at uh, at and it was actually Singular Wireless at the time, if you remember the orange guy, um, after mergers and acquisitions. And so I have this really broad view of all of the applications that were used by an organization and all of the data that was underneath it, that. And that led me into working with big data at Turner and that um, led me working with a, a data security startup in um, really encryption and external authorization management. And, and that's where I was right before I came to Veracode. And so I think over the course of my career, I've just kept, kept getting deeper and deeper. I'm kind of fearless about uh, tackling topics that I even know nothing about. And so that's, that's actually just been um, really rewarding for me. I, I think if I look back though, when I was, um, I think in high school, my parents began a startup called Future Kids. So this was before people actually had their own computers at home, uh, <laughs> not to date myself. And I was uh, the unpaid help. You could send your kids to Future Kids to get, you know, math and science uh, after school uh, help, as well as hands-on computers. And and so there was a lot of stuff that I I did there. Um, it's it's probably just been in the background um, of my life and just been something that I've continued to invest in. That's great. So a lot of natural curiosity and a bit of fearlessness. That's a amazing. lot of fearlessness. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it took. So um, you know. So let's let's uh, let a few of a few of you have mentioned your parents. Um, you know, and I know my parents were certainly inspirational for me as well. My mom was a PhD student at MIT back in the 60s studying molecular biology. She was definitely the only woman in that program. So, um, uh, Mansi, you mentioned your parents as well. Like, so t tell me about what inspiration you had also. And, and were there other female figures in your, history, in your background that also helped you along the way? I would say my uh, mom was a big uh, motivational figure for me. Uh, she herself has a, her master's in English literature back in India. Uh, she uh, she never took no for an answer for uh, for for me as a female child. Like you want to do this, you have to do this. Just go for it. Uh, no matter if there are not many uh, women in that area of sphere, just just. Uh, Go for it. Set your mind to it, and just uh, follow your dreams. That's that's something I have been uh, incorporated into my brain since my childhood. And uh, obviously, they were protective, uh, like uh, not go through a fierce competition of uh, places where you have to keep fighting all your life or something. But yeah, I mean that was one of the uh, biggest. Uh, kind of a hurdle to overcome the cultural and uh, societal ba barriers, but uh, keep moving forward. So, yeah. Uh, so, Lupita, it sounds like you had a lot of inspiration and guidance from teachers along the way. Um, how about once you started your career? Um, you know, was there a specific mentor? You know, was there a, a significant woman or, or male figure um, who helped you pursue your, you know, what you wanted to do? Absolutely. I remember when I first had my corporate job in the tech world, it was HP. Um, there was a, a mentor that I was assigned to help me kind of build out the um, project that they had assigned to me. And him and a couple other guys were very like forward thinking. And anytime I had a question, anytime I had concerns, they were very supportive. I remember not the entire team was that way. Um, my experience with um being in that setting was completely new i never had the opportunity to have a real job like i'd worked in fast food i worked for my parents but like never have been in a setting where it was like 17 men myself and then my manager was a woman um but they were very accommodating and helpful along the entire way i was very quiet and shy i didn't speak up i didn't say anything um, because i was scared in the beginning but they just always encouraged me to say what I needed to say because they said at the end of the day, if you don't say it, I, they, what was it? The answer is no until you ask. So that was one of the major key things I took away from that. Tanusha, who inspired you along the way? Uh, my mom and my dad. Uh, they, they have been the biggest mentor because my mom, uh, she was married at a very young age, but she pursued her education. She did uh, three masters in three different subjects. and. Um, 
uh, raised us as well. So when people say that, you know, having a child and then having a full time study and a job, it's not easy. It, this will impact your child. I say to them that if I have been grown up like this and I am here where I am, my kid will be successful too. And so that that's what I have learned from my mom. And the best thing about my dad is that he can conclude positivity out of anything and everything. So as a kid, I always said that if, if I'm, you know, bitching about something, pardon my language, <laughs> but he will be like, you know, there must be something good about it. He'll, he'll conclude it as a positive thing. And I never understood him back then, but now I know that how to be a positive person. Great. Let's talk about the work experience. So, you know, as, as you've move, moved through, uh, through your education and into the work experience, um, were there made any major hurdles that you faced, you know, that you felt were related to uh, the fact that you were a woman? I mean, there's no question if you look at technology in general, and then also certainly cybersecurity, there's a major gap, right? There's a major gap between uh, uh, the balance of, of men and women in the workforce. And, you know, I, if you, if you, if you think about your career, what, what, what were the major hurdles that you did face? Um, or, or who were, uh, women or men who stepped up to help you succeed? Chrissy, why don't we start with you? Sure. Well, um, when I moved into cybersecurity, I was uh, shocked by how few women there were at the company. I mean, when I joined, there were so few women that I, I didn't even have to lock the bathroom stall when I went to the bathroom because there just there were there were more stalls than there were actual women who worked on the floor. And and to be honest, like I was hired there to do some systems and software uh, uh, integration work, sales operations work. And so. I, I didn't really get into the product until some people left and I got a battlefield promotion to run the marketing department and I'd never done marketing before. And so um, that felt like a hurdle being given like massive responsibility above and beyond anything that I had done before. I, this is me raising my hand going, are you sure you guys do know that I've never done this before? And you you're fearless. It, yes. <laughs> and actually the chief operating officer who had been the CMO at the time, she called me fearless in her um, appraisal of me and said that I think you can probably do anything. And I really held on to that because I experienced a lot of challenges from knowledgeable people at the company who looked at me as someone who didn't know much about um, technology or cybersecurity and really gave me a hard time about it. When I would present ideas in meetings, like there would be crickets and no one would say anything. And then five minutes later, one of the guys in the room would say essentially the same thing and everyone would go, oh yeah, that's a great idea. And that just really, I mean, it it burned me up. And so I had control of the analyst relations program at the time and I just home, took home stacks of research and just read and talked to people in the industry until I could build up my own knowledge. And I will say that from a mentorship perspective, one of the best things I got involved with there was the weekly engineering book club. And we chose different topics every week and got together as a group to read them. And they might be completely over my head. So, Nancy, I'm reading like uh, cryptographic methods, um, university re PhD research papers, or like all of the help files on how to set up Kubernetes security and just getting together to talk about it. And I had a lot of dumb questions and there were a group of folks on the uh, security operations team, the, the research team there, who just really encouraged my curiosity and actually seeing how some of what I thought of were maybe dumb questions really sparked um, fascinating conversations with all of us. And I think uh, what really helped me out was just the encouragement of that curiosity and the ability to have those discussions in within a safe container um, really uh, helped improve my ability to even speak on topics that I might have never known anything about a week before, right? Well, certainly, I think in the there 
uh, in marketing and sales roles, there's less of a gender gap. There is still yet a, a gender gap, particularly in, in, the, in the more technically oriented fields like cybersecurity. Uh, but Nancy and, and to, uh, I'm sorry, but Mansi and Tanuja, uh, you guys are in the thick of it. Uh, when we look at the get gender gap in technical roles like yours, um, it certainly stands out. So, what have your experiences been? You know, as women, perhaps maybe some of the only women in your in your field or in your companies. Uh, Mansi, let's start with you. Yeah, I mean, so. Uh... I have generally always, as a kid growing up, always had some kind of a confidence issue. And uh, I'm generally a quieter person. So someone, if someone really needs something from me, they need to poke me harder. Uh, and all these uh, things definitely came my way. Uh, in my previous jobs, yes, I would generally sit quiet on a conference table unless someone really pokes me that Mansi, What do you think about this? Uh, but I mean, I'm, I'm in this field from like now 13, 14 years. So uh, it was much more uh, uh, lesser women back then than now. But I've always come across great men who have always uh, cared for my opinions, uplifted me, uh, gave me good projects to work on, think harder, valued my contributions, acknowledged my contributions. And then once I came to Veracode, that's uh, one very... Uh, a refreshing thing for me is there are a lot of great women in leadership positions, starting from our CEO, Elena Yu. A lot of our product leaders in the technical side have been women. A lot of lead engineers who are actually ruling our products are women. So, so it's very refreshing to see women in so many leading positions. And it kind of, in its own way, is very inspiring for me. So uh, when you talk, I mean, that's that's something how I work. And when I'm feeling a huge imposter syndrome, I just look up to them that, yeah, yeah, they can do it. I can do it, too. And then it's one it's very inspiring. Yes, that's great. That's great. Tanusha, you seem a bit uh, of an extrovert, um, if, if I can tell from our conversation so far. Um, how about you? How have you felt that you've been impacted by the gender gap? Um, if I start from uh, when I joined Cognizant as a fresher, uh, in our Cognizant training batch, we had a batch of 25 uh, people and out of them, 24 were girls. I was super happy because I was never part of a girls' school or a girls' uh, universities. So I was very excited about that. But slowly, when I moved into different projects and then I switched companies to uh, different locations, uh, I think after two to three years, it started that I used to be the only female in the team. So the graph is like a pyramid. There are lots and lots of female uh, employees as freshers, but then when when we go up, it, it decreases. And I think uh, the most difficult thing for me to hear is, I heard someone saying once that, uh, that's very impressive that she is, despite being a female, she's so techy. And I said, what do you think? Do, do, do you think you are appreciating me? But you are actually insulting me and every female. So uh, that is very rude, actually, I would say. And that's a common mindset. So I think people should believe that technology is technology. It, it, it cannot be biased towards any gender. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And Lupita, this is a great question for you because you are probably in the most testosterone oriented field in tech, which is sales. Um, so tell us about your experience. Did you, did you, have you felt, have you felt helped or, or, or pushed back because you, you're a woman in your field? So a, a little bit of both, right? It depends on the situation, if you will. Um, internally, as some of um, our teammates here have already said, Verico does a fantastic job of making you feel welcome, making you feel included. So the employees themselves have never made me feel that way. But being customer facing, having conversations with, you know, C-level or engineers of more seniority, um, I've had to prove myself. And there's been times where I don't even turn on my camera just so that they can hear what I have to say and not judge me based on my appearance. So 
it's definitely been a whirlwind of experiences, um, both highs and lows, but every single conversation that I have, I always try to yeah, learn from it and just adjust accordingly and make sure that I hold the people that make me feel a certain way accountable by demonstrating that it's about um, what I can provide for them and, and helping them solve their, their problems as opposed to what it is, you know, in terms of the subject matter that we're discussing. Yeah, let's get really specific on this one. Do you have an example that you can share from your past where, you know, you, you know, you, you were able to turn the situation around? What tactic did you use? So I remember, um, so I, I've kind of jumped around a little bit. So I used to be just a technical counterpart to sales reps. And over the years, I found that I was driving most of the conversations. And so then I switched over to be an individual contributor. So now I'm a direct AE working with customers. Um, if I could pinpoint one specific situation, I think it, I don't want to say it's like one particular customer or prospect that I can think of on the fly right now. But more so the common trend that I see is typically when um, uh, we're discussing like our philosophy and approach as a company as to how we solve these problems, I always have to um, show my credentials. So when I'm talking about like what it is I'm saying, I'll get some pushback and then I'll explain you know, where I'm coming from. So my background is in electrical engineering, and computer science. And so I start have to going deep into the fundamentals of the mathematics and like what, for example, like graph theory, like what does that actually mean? What problems are we solving? And I have to reference like specific theorems and then they go, oh, she knows what she's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we've had, we've had some common threads here of uh, women have to dig deeper into, uh, you know, to prove their skills that we, we have to prove ourselves uh, with our technical skills to, uh, you know, to earn a place at the table, if you will, we have to work harder to do that. Let me ask all of you, uh, you know, one more question and Tanuja, I want to start with you because uh, you have a young daughter. Um, what do you think uh, we, we sh how should we guide young girls and young women? Uh, to pursue a, a STEM and tech career and a career in cybersecurity? Um, I think technology, the way world is moving towards technology, software is only thing that is going to remain with us in the next world. So, uh, and I won't say because software is the way going forward, everybody should take software instead every every girl should pursue what they want i was growing up i was very lucky to have parents who always let me do what i wanted to do when, when i decided to drop for two years uh, they didn't say no to that when i decided to move to another city to pursue another job they didn't say no to me so i i decided how how my life is going to go and they always supported me. So I would say that for girls or for anyone for that matter, they should be the one deciding what they want from their life. Not that this is the one, this is the way you have to go, go this way. You have to do this. What people will say, don't worry about what people will say. Just do what, what you want to do with your life. It's your life. In fact, Matthew, what, what would you say that? young women or what would you say to encourage young women to consider the field a tech, technical field uh, i think i'm trying my level best to uh, make it look less out of reach uh, i mean there's a lot of stereotype about uh, how this field is like every all guys are sitting with like a hooded black shirt and like coding all night there is a lot of diversity in cybersecurity. We, we we don't we do need that talent but there is like 12 other fields just under cybersecurity, which needs equally talented people. And there is a lot of other uh, auxiliary fields of it. So, so there is a lot of room here. There is a lot of diversity here. And it's definitely not out of reach. Just be persuasive of what you are, what you want. If you get it in the first go, it's probably too easy for you. That's, that's the way I think I would go for it. Yeah. And how about you, Lupita? I would say is um, providing access to the resources because, like I said, for myself, coming from a completely different world, um, not knowing that it, it was it was even a career option was 
something that made me realize that if we were to just expose the opportunity and provide the resources they needed to young girls, then potentially they could find the talent in themselves to pursue the career. Even like calculators, like for like complex math classes that you move into, like having access to those simple things like that, right? Um, those can get expensive. So I, I remember be thinking to myself, like, had I not had the people in my life to guide me, to show me, to tell me what I needed to do to excel in these courses, or even to know what courses to take, um, probably wouldn't have done it. So. Yeah, it's great to hear that the school systems did right by you. I, I think the uh, most of the others of us have had parent, you know, parental figures who are really, you know, pushing us in, uh, you know, towards education. I think I steered away from technology because of my parents, who were both scientists. <laughs> but then I found my way back because <laughs> it just turned out to be what I was good at. One last question. So what, you know, as you as you look ahead, um, what is something you'd love to see change in technology in the next five to 10 years? Uh, I think I see, I would like to see two huge things. Uh, one of them is, uh, transparency in the pay structure because uh, that's one thing which is always discussed which is something which in my experience a lot deters a lot of women uh, second thing is uh, a safe uh, forum i might say where uh, like women related issues can be uh, safely discussed uh, to change the culture around like it like this one EWF is perfect for that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yes. Uh, something, something in that uh, nature. There's, there is some work to be done there, but uh, there is a lot of uh, sexual harassment trainings going on in most of the companies and stuff. So we are in that direction, but uh, we have some more work to do. So yeah, those are the two big things I would like to uh, see pleasantly change in the next uh, few years. Great, Tanuja, what about you? I would say two things. One, to all the parents that uh, don't stop your daughter for doing whatever she wants to. If she wants to enter the technology, let her do that because technology is not for men or not for women. It's for everyone. And second, to all the people in the technology field that don't stereotype because uh, stereotyping is our biggest enemy. So I would like to see a equal world I'm not asking for uh, any privileges for women because we don't need it, but just the equality. Yeah. And how about you, Lupita? I would say entry to the opportunity. I think um, looking back in trying to figure out which job I wanted to take, um, some of the like interview processes were designed to um, allow the people with more experience or who had, you know, maybe connections or who had um, the opportunity to intern in the past had a more, what is it, an easier path to getting the full-time job. So I sometimes feel like, and I have been out of it for a while, that if we were to kind of keep it open and not make the interview processes so rigid, so black and white, then the opportunity for women to enter these roles would be much higher or more likely. I mean, I think so. We've heard some good, good things here around pay transparency, and 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 I'll translate what some of you are saying into you know there are programs that I think companies can can uh, initiate, can take the lead on, to help uh, to help encourage women, to help encourage go, going all the way back to uh, education, to encourage uh, girls to try, young girls to try uh, technology, get interested in in cybersecurity. And also, um, when we're bringing people into the work programs to bring women into the work, uh, we work, for example, with uh, a group called Power to Fly that helps us source women candidates um, into the company. Um, and there are a lot of things that business can do to ensure that women are getting equal pay um, for the same job that a man is doing. And, uh, and making sure that we're focused on finding great women to, to, to join the teams, our teams, because that's fundamentally what I think will change um, as we go forward into the next 10 years. So thank you all, uh, Christy, Lupita, Mansi, Tanuja, for uh, joining me today. And uh, thank you all for tuning in. Thank you.